the music one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brother, I couldn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to thank everybody for coming here today. And uh, I wanted to say thank you. And our Uncle Mick is here today, one of our last uncles, of course. And he was able to make it. And, uh, and, uh, also, Aunt Betty, who's not here with us today, but I know she's uh, still getting around, and, but I just wanted to say special thanks to Uncle Mick and his daughters for taking good care of him and bringing him over here today. Thank you, Uncle Mick. Uh, just a couple quick words here. My, my memory's back here. Uh, first of all, my grandfather. I was five years old when he passed away, and my fond memory of that was, I think I may have said something earlier to the people in there when he had the viewing. That's where he was laid out. I think a lot of our cousins remember that site, and that's, that's what sticks with me. When he was laid out, and I was five years old. Also, he took me on the bus, he picked up over there, went to Norristown, and he brought a bicycle for us. Brought that home. So that's my memory of my grandfather. Uncle Sam goes along with Bobby, and brother Jimmy is no longer with us, and my brother Peter. Every Tuesday, Uncle Sam would come by, beat the horn, me and Peter would run out. There's Uncle Sam and Jimmy in the back. We'd go down to the city. We would buy all whatever Uncle Sam needed. Most of it was all Bennett cans. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Lou, you would know that. It was all Sexton brands. He would come back here and tell my dad, don't worry, Pete, there was no label, but it was all good. The cans were all Bennett, but they were good. They never had a bad can for him. But that was, that was my memory of Uncle Sam. We would go up there and have more of a mess, and then we would have lunch. That was my memory with Uncle Sam. Then I have Uncle Chick. Not Uncle Chick. He sat there more times than I can remember drinking a Windsor and a beer. <laughs> Windsor and a beer. That was at the old bar here. The phone, we had a pay phone where Cousin Louis standing right now. And he would run back there all the time. Who was calling? Aunt Sis was calling. When are you coming home? When are you coming home? <laughs> Four hours later, she was still calling. And was still Another shot in the beer. So that's my memory of Uncle Chet. And then, of course, I had my Uncle Joe, right? Thanks for the bus change. That was Uncle Joe. He went around, he penned a bar. At that time, everybody left change on the bar. I, that was his saying, thanks for the bus change. <laughs> and one other thing about Uncle Joe, not one, but just one that sticks out in my mind. Uh, my glasses right here. <laughs> Uncle Joe would always say, always say, there we go, we'll do it the way he would have done it. He would put the glass there, he would move back like this, and he would say to everybody, I'll drink that beer without touching it. And everybody would look around, look around, look around. Uncle Joe would come under the bar. This is the same stick that he used. <laughs> 50 years old, probably. Probably. He would go like this. Uncle Joe, I hope I'm going to do it right. Spin it up like this. That was Uncle Joe's trick. <laughs> Never touch the glass. <laughs> the other one that he always said, and I'm not going to do that, he would always say all year long, how's the Irishman pull up in socks? And he would just say that and leave it at that, leave it at that, leave it at that. And then one day with St. Patrick's Day, Uncle Joe's here, he went in the doorway where Cousin Louie's again, he said, how's the Irishman pull up in socks? Well, he we stood this way with the bar full, dropped his pants, and pulled up his socks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the Irishman pulled up his socks. So that's my fine memories of uh, my uncle. I have a couple other little memories here. I want to thank uh, Carol and my family 